You're listening to Public Safety First, a podcast to help you learn about the First Responder Network Authority and how you can be part of the future of public safety technology. And now, your host, Dave Buchanan. Hello, and welcome to the Public Safety First podcast. There has been a lot of attention recently on the tragic California wildfires and the performance of communication networks for first responders. On today's podcast, Kevin Nida, our Public Safety Advisor for California, interviews Stockton, California Fire Chief Eric Newman. Kevin previously had a 37-year career with the Los Angeles Fire Department, where he was a battalion chief. Chief Newman shares his experiences with FirstNet and his use of the network during their response to the 2017 California wildfires. Hi, I'm Kevin Nida. I'm the Public Safety Advisor to FirstNet Authority in California. Uh, Here today with uh, Chief Eric from the Stockton Fire Department. We're at Fire Rescue International in Dallas, Texas. Good morning. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you and FirstNet for having me on this morning. So, Chief, can you tell us a little bit about your background and your uh, current agency? Yes. um, I've been in the fire service approximately 28 years, working on year 29. I'm the fire chief currently of the city of Stockton. Uh, The city of Stockton is approximately uh, one hour south of Sacramento. Um, We have approximately uh, 360,000 residents. Uh, We have 12 fire stations. And our call volume is right around about 52,000 annually. Very good, Chief. Uh, How important is having reliable communications to you considering the area that you operate in? For me and and the members, uh, having good communications is is a must. Uh, We actually dispatch for five cities. Uh, the city of Tracy, Lathrop, Manteca, Manteca, and Lodi, and of course Stockton being the fifth. And I couldn't tell you how paramount it is to have that that communications. Uh, we cross boundaries. We also uh, have the ability to uh, go into county districts as well. And um, I will say that all of our agencies that we dispatch for have radios that are P25 compliant, dual band. Uh, radios, and uh, it's a must for public safety. I remember several years ago, Kevin, if we go back, uh, not dating ourselves, 20 years, you couldn't even talk to your neighbor. And now we're at a point to where you can just turn a channel, you can just jump on that that other agency's dispatch center and give you a call sign and let them know that you're uh, responding. Your agency has adopted FirstNet, and uh, what, uh, what led you to that decision? Yes, um, Stockton Fire Department has adopted FirstNet. Um, about nine years ago, uh, I was part of Cal Chiefs, um, and uh, and I'm still part of Cal Chiefs. But at the time, FirstNet was formerly known as D-Block, and uh, Jeff Johnson and several other fire chiefs and chiefs throughout the state of California t- took a contingency of folks back to talk about uh, bandwidth and what. D Block now first net can do for uh, public safety um, that this would be a game changer and I was so back then and it picked up steam a couple years ago and I must say that through the presentations that first net has been given over the last year or so um, it, it, it was a no-brainer for me the the big part was just selling the city manager um, you know, uh, the deputies and, and members of the Stockton Fire Department, hey, this is something that can definitely benefit us. Uh, it's right in line with our mission and vision as it relates to providing good service to our customers and visitors. To me, FirstNet was, wasn't an option. <laughs> it, it was something that we were going to do. Uh, earlier this year, we had some devastating fires in the state, and, and those fires are now continuing to... Uh, you know, new, new fire starting. Uh, what was your experience uh, earlier this year with, uh, with FirstNet? Well, we were early in the process of switching over to FirstNet and, and developing an account. And none of my members knew that we were going to be going to FirstNet. In fact, they didn't even know what FirstNet was. But unfortunately, there was a wildland fire in the Napa Valley, Sonoma area, where we had two fire engines. So we sent the strike team of engines to uh, help out immediate need. And they had some communications issues up there. Um, Upon arrival, uh, 
our business keys wasn't working, our portable radios couldn't get patched because the repeaters were either burned or there was some type of damage. Um, FirstNet uh, showed up with some deployables. Um, they worked with another company to set up repeaters around the area. And the captains that had an opportunity uh, had an opportunity to grab some uh, some some phones and radios, and they were simply amazed. And when they got back, they said, "Hey, chief, you know we were at this, we had the wildland fire. We couldn't talk, but uh, they gave us this phone to AT and T or a radio, and we were able to talk. And man, it was awesome. Uh, met our needs, and." Uh, they said, are we going to first net too? And I just smiled and said, yes, we are. Yes, we are. So uh, so the beauty of that is that I didn't have to sell it because now I can use those guys' testimony to sell to the organization based on a real-time, real-life call that they went through, and they had the opportunity to actually use the equipment that was provided to them, and um, uh, which was awesome. You know? So... Uh, so and then the boots on the ground, they, they're the ones. They're the ones, you know, that provide the, the, the communications. They're using the radios. They're using the phones every day. And when you get buy-in from them based on an, an actual event and they give the stamp of approval, to me, that's like a touchdown. So um, I, was, uh, I was just smiling. I was like, okay, well, when I do my presentation for the entire department, I want to make sure I have a couple of captains and firefighters with me so they can explain and give their testimony based on the event that they had when they went to Napa. Thank you, but first step, make your expectations. That's, that's what it's all about. Yes, it, you know, in my opinion, first that is meeting my expectations, but to have a real event and have a crew that didn't know nothing about FirstNet and then come back and talk about, hey, the communications was awesome and what this company did and they were able to hand out radios or, or portables and we were able to talk, you can't beat that. I see the fire service where they're going to be able to auto launch drones, send video feedback to our MDCs. Company officers, chief officers are going to be able to see real in real time pictures of incidents, video of incidents, and really be able to make uh, a determination on whether the resources that are being dispatched are efficient or do they need to uh, add more resources. And uh, coupled with that, I think the, with the ability of, of FirstNet, not only from a, a radio perspective or video perspective, but also the phones. Uh, people want devices that have multiple functions. Uh, radio, uh, push to talk, uh, uh, email, phone. They, they, want, they don't want, like carrying two phones and a radio. They want something that is compact, that, is, that they can carry, that's not cumbersome, but most of all, that's going to work. First, that continue to best serve you, best serve the fire service. Well, I think that um, FirstNet is it, definitely here to stay. I believe if they can get some measurable wins by surveying the country and picking up those spots in different towns where the service is not that good, and if they can come through on building repeaters and making this, the system seamless, I believe that it is definitely going to improve relationships. Speaking candid, I think some folks are a little hesitant, but I think that they're willing to give it a, a shot. You, FirstNet, AT&T have hired some excellent people that have good credibility, so people are willing to take that chance. Folks like yourself that have been in the fire service for 30 plus years, we look at it from fire chiefs that people are not going to sign on to something just to be signing on if it's not going to work. So I believe that you're going to see fire chiefs that are going to be willing to take that chance like me. How can they serve it? I think that uh, they made a lot of promises. They need to come through on making sure that uh, repeater sites and things are up. So the fire service obviously is a, is a network of highly reliable organizations. First, that needs to be that highly reliable organization as well. Yeah, I definitely agree. Every See, FirstNet is new to a lot of people. I think that when anything that comes out new, everybody's going to jump on board. But for some of us that have been around a little bit, we're looking at the sustainability. You know, where is FirstNet going to be year three, year six, 
year nine, year 12. You know, I'm hoping that it gets to a point to where I mentioned earlier, you know, I would like to see where we use video cameras and streets, uh, satellite, drones, you know, where that can get that information back in real time to the folks that are in these fire engines and look and see, hey, if you've got a working fire or a bad accident, where they can make decisions based on what they see right then and there. Um, do they need to go code three? Can we go code two um, in the streets where, you know, so, so I think that is definitely going to benefit. Um, I'm, I won't, I'm, I'm definitely optimistic and I'm, I'm definitely uh, feel that FirstNet will be able to meet the need of the fire chiefs and, and public safety just in general if they can accomplish a few of those goals as it relates to sites and, uh, and things like that. Thank you, Chief. Uh, you know, those of us who uh, serve in the fire service or have served, uh, just on a, on a personal note, you know, what drives you to put on that uniform every day and continue to work and, and do the work that you do? Well, what, what drives me is that uh, as a fire chief, I'm here to support the, the folks that work for me. Um, we kind of set the tone for uh, for the day, for you know, for for the organization, and I try to come to work every day with a positive attitude. Uh, I know that um, uh, I'm very fortunate and blessed to be in the position that I am, and uh, I will tell you that uh, the biggest, the easiest thing is getting the job. Believe it or not, being a firefighter, captain, engineer, fire chief. Once you get it. The toughest part is sustaining it. You know, you have to sustain it. And when you get it, you have to do something with it. And, and so for me, uh, when I put on my uniform, uh, I know that there was a lot of men uh, that came before me. And, uh, you know, we are part of a, a legacy organization. And, and uh, I try to wear it with pride. Um, and I pride myself on doing the right thing when no one's looking. Thank you, Chief. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Enjoy your time here. Yeah. Thank you. Texas. Thank you. Yeah, um, it's hot here, you know. Yes, it is. <laughs> Thanks for listening today. We're excited to have you join our podcast community. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. You can learn more about the First Responder Network Authority at FirstNet.gov and learn about FirstNet products and services at FirstNet.com.